Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 18th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. This tutorial will be covering clearing that start screen on our main menu, as well as dealing with a little bit of music. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So I think the next few tutorials are going to be all about creating immersion in our game and making things flow nicely. So we're going to be dealing with different scenes that do different things and things that happen and then don't happen again. And then some fading, the right sound effects, the right music and all stuff like that. And what I want to start with in this particular segment is getting rid of that uh, click start and it pans down. We need to stop that happening. So... Firstly, let's go to our main menu. So let's go to scenes and go to main menu. And on the canvas itself, if you remember, we have that uh, big massive button, basically, because that's all it comes down to. We just need to stop that button from happening. And the way we need to do this is we need to set up a couple of different things. So if we go to the script that this is attached to on main menu controls, uh, main menu control, Let's open that up in Visual Studio. And what we'll do is we will create a variable that will allow us to only play this particular button whenever we start the game. So happens for the first time, we play a couple of levels, we close the game, start the game again, and it does it just that once again. So what this means is that we have to create a static variable and we have dealt with static variables, so we know how they work. So we're gonna create a bool to say, have we done this? So Let's go to our um, class, and in fact, we will make this, uh, we'll, we'll type public static uh, bool has uh, clicked, semicolon. Obviously, uh, by default, this will be uh, false. Uh, in fact, no, do you know what? No, we won't make it a default anything because at the end of the day, what we could do is as soon as this starts, we can say in void start, this is where it all will happen. So what this also means is that we have to deal with two separate cameras as well. We have to deal with the camera that pans down and then we make a duplicate of our camera that is already in the correct position. So let's also add those serialize field, serialize field and game object and we'll have anim cam which is the original one and then once again serialize field game object and we have this as static cam semicolon so what we'll do is at some point we'll make it so as once we've clicked and once we've done something in the game in fact, we need to change anim cam because we've already got a game which, there yeah, let's change that. In fact, I'm mumbling away to myself. We already have the anim cam there. Of course we do, so we don't need it. I just realized. So when you see something like that, you have the idea of what you want to do, and it underlines it in red. Check your other variables like I should have done, because we already have it. So what I'm going to do, actually, is save that and head back into Unity, just to make sure that we are on the same page here. So once this has uh, compiled... Let's click on this anim cam. Yeah, so we already have it. And the anim cam, its final position is same as the main camera. So we can use the main camera as our static cam. So let's rename this to static cam. And let's turn that off. So we have both in place now. So let's set that variable into there. So main menu controls, drag and drop static cam. And the idea is that after we have played the animation down, we set that bool as true. And then we need to set the if statement. So let's head back to our scene and let's scroll down. And where we have this iNumerator anim cam, main menu control set active as the last line, let's go below there and type has clicked equals true, semicolon. So what that means is that if we go to void start, we essentially need to put the actual camera, the main camera, or static camera, as the camera to see. 
So we say if, and in brackets, has clicked equals true, open curly bracket and do the following. Static cam dot set active true, semicolon. And then we say anim cam dot set active is false in brackets. So what we've done here is we've set the correct camera. However, the button will still appear. Now, what it also means is that if we go down here, whenever we click it, we go down here and we say, uh, you know, this happens, this happens, this happens. So really, we need all this to happen once again. So we also need to set the main menu controls on. So they need to go here. Uh, we also need to turn the big button and the bounce anim as off. So we can copy those right there. So if I save that now and head back into Unity, what we've effectively done here is we've said that once we click start, we registered that we've clicked start. So the next time we come to the main menu, we shouldn't have to do it. So let's test this out. Again, this just adds to the immersion. You know, whenever you start a game for the first time, you click to start and all good, brilliant. And let's start game. And let's see now if we end our run, go back to main menu, and we should hopefully not have to click. There we go. So we're straight back to the main menu. Perfect. Now what I think we might do here is maybe we should add a fade in screen as well, uh, just to give it a bit more immersion. So we've got obviously fade out. Uh, let's go to, in fact, let's save our scene. Let's go to scenes, let's go to desert run, and let's just take the actual fade in. So canvas, uh, oh, we haven't even made a fade in yet, have we? I just realized that. Okay, never mind. Main menu, let's see how quick we can do this. Game object. Uh, UI, let's go to raw image, let's anchor the position to full, and zero, 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 zero. Hopefully at this point you know exactly what's going on here, you know why we're doing this and all the reasons behind it. Let's name it Fade In, let's go to the animations folder, and let's go to animation, let's click on create, and then let's call this Fade In, and we'll fade in over a second. So. Let's press the record button, set the first keyframe as 255 on the alpha, uh, 60 frame, ooh, not 600, we don't want over 10 seconds, 60, and let's set the alpha to zero, and then let's stop the animation recording, go to project, go to fade in, loop time. Now, we do have to turn off this fade in screen after one second, it is important we do that. So, we could create another coroutine technically, or we could try and Im can put, build it into the coroutines that we currently have. So let's go to our script again, the main menu control. Let's add in that variable, serialize field, game object, fade in. And if we scroll down uh, to here, after 1.5 seconds, let's have fade in turn off. So fade in dot set active, oops, uh, acting active is false semicolon. So that basically means that we're able to, um, actually, if we name it correctly, that means we're actually able to click the buttons. Because remember, the ordering of the hierarchy means that our fade in is going to be the topmost object, which means we won't be able to click anything. Uh, it does also mean that we need to create another coroutine for this section here. Because if we've already clicked it, our fade in will never turn off. So let's go below the anim cam and let's say I enumerator and we'll call this fade in turn off, oh, close bracket, open curly bracket, and then yield return new, wait for seconds and in brackets, the length of time that your fade in takes. After that, fade in dot set active false with a semicolon. Uh, so next what we need to do is up here say start coroutine and in brackets fade in turn off oh close bracket close bracket again semicolon save the script and let's head back into unity and I will put this script 
in the pinned comment. So if you go to pinned comment, you have any problems here, go download it for free and you're all good to go. Uh, so we just need to go to our main menu controls, add our fade in object to there. And fingers crossed we shouldn't have a problem now. Everything should work as intended. So let's try this out and then we'll quickly add some music to this. So click to start. Oh, do you know what? I've just realized we need to change how this actually works. So realistically, now I think about it, we need to turn off. Yeah, so there's the ordering of some code. This needs to go before our if statement, because what we're doing here is we need to turn it off no matter what. So that should be good to go now. See, this is the beauty of working through code and trying to figure things out. You can just go back and forth, change code, and one line moved from one place to another has such an impact because there we go. We can now click it. So let's start the game. Uh, let's end the run, and we should still fade in. Everything should be as it was before, except we've now got a fade in. Are we ready? There we go. Perfect. Like I say, I'll put the script in the pinned comment. Uh, so next what we'll do is let's add a bit of music to this. This is gonna take just a minute. So let's go on main menu controls and let's go to um, empty, get, create empty. There we go. We'll have this as BGM, not GBM, <laughs> BGM. Uh, and then in there, we'll create another one. And we'll have this as Desert BGM. And if you played Timmy and Mousy, uh, which I linked to in the very first tutorial, you'll know that the music for it is just basically the same as the actual level, except it's pitched down. So we'll have this as 0 0.7. And... Oh, that's quite loud. <laughs> that is quite loud. Uh, let's lower it down just a little bit. There we go. Maybe 0 0.8. How's it sound on that? Yeah, we'll have 0 0.8. So yeah, if you have played that Endless Runner, Timmy and Mousy, you'll know that whenever you finish a level, you, you know, you, you hear the music in the level, you finish it, you come back to the main menu, the music in it is a lower pitched version of the level you've just been in. So if you played on the Icy Issues level and came back to the main menu, you'd hear a lower pitched uh, music of the Icy Issues level. So I think that's just how things flow quite nicely within this game. So there we go. Start game. There we go. Cool. Crash. Back to the main menu. And there we go. Cool. Excellent. Right. So you can see the immersion taking place now. So next tutorial, what we'll do is we will create a level select screen. I know we've only got one level now, so we're gonna get it in place, uh, ready for when we've got more levels. And we'll, again, create some immersion and make everything flow nicely. So uh, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and I'll see you next time.